service. Uh, we have some folks in church this morning, and it's always good to have people around that uh, love us, I think. And uh, it's just a wonderful opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people that are out there um, going through this coronavirus and all kinds of things that have been happening in our world. It seems like the world's kind of going crazy right now, but uh, Jesus is still on the throne. God's still in charge. And uh, so, you know, we should not be worried. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. And so we're here this morning, and we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to glorify his name. We're going to share something from God's word. But if you would bow your heads with us, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. Father, we love you today. Thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, your love, your compassion, dear Lord, your long-suffering patience with us. We thank you, Father, that you're always there when we call on your name. And Father, we're never alone. Father, I thank you that, dear Lord, we have this privilege, Father, to talk about your goodness, to talk about your love. I pray, Father, that we would present you in a light that would cause people to want to come. And, dear Lord, have fellowship with you and to walk in your footsteps. I pray in Jesus' name for every person that's hurting, every person that might be sick or in affliction today. I pray especially for Mom Lois, who's had this infection in her body. I pray that you bring healing to her, Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, that you've touched, dear Lord, so many of our people, dear Lord, have been uh, out. We're glad, dear Father, that uh, you've protected and kept them safe. And I uh, want to give you glory and honor for it. I pray you bless our worship. Father, bless the word that is speaking to our lives. And Father, we'll praise you and we'll thank you for all of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing with us this morning. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Him for everything. 
any song we sing, any message that we may share, it's got to be seasoned with the Holy Spirit. God's got to touch it. God's got to bless it. Or it'll actually go nowhere. Amen. So I'm grateful to the Lord that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We're not walking around wondering if we belong to God or not. I know who I belong to, and I am persuaded that He's able to keep me until Hallelujah. the day when He decides to take me home. Yes. And you have that same promise. You have that same hope that one day when we get over on the other side, it's going to be a time of jubilee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what this song's all about. It says, Heaven's Jubilee. So if you know it, you sing it with us. All right. Well, sunlight morning, we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, show his heart to share. What the ghost in there will be when the saints arrive. And it's all that you believe under in the sky. And I say, oh, what a thing singing that song, I thought one of these days it's going to be a jubilee. It's Ooh. going to be a time of, of no more sickness, sorrow, pain, death, suffering. All that stuff will be done with. We'll be done with protests and we'll be done with viruses and we'll be done with everything that we're having to deal with right now. We'll be home with Jesus and there'll be no sickness, sorrow, pain, or death in that land. Amen. And we're looking forward to it one yes. of these days. This song says, oh how marvelous and he is a marvelous wonderful Savior. And we lean on him every single day. Amen. I stand 
somebody else might have wrote it, but the first time I heard it, I said, what a, what a powerful, wonderful song to be able to sing to our Lord, because that's who we're actually singing to. Uh, you get to watch, you get to hear. We're really singing as unto the Lord, because uh, we want Him to be glorified, we want Him to be praised. You know, I've been reading a lot about David lately in the scriptures and the psalms and stuff that he wrote before he ever became king. He had this relationship with God that let him sit out on the backside, tending sheep and looking at the stars and the moon and all that stuff. And it prepared him for what God was going to use him for in the future. Uh, he never forgot where he came from. Oh, he had his faults, and who doesn't? He had his failures, and who doesn't? But thank God he was a man, the scripture says, after God's own heart. Amen. And uh, even when God was... You know, looking at Solomon and saying, you know, your heart's not pure like my your father's was. You, you don't have a heart for me like he had for me. And you know, I, I want to have that kind of heart, the heart that reaches after God and says, Amen. I want him more than I want anything else. Amen. And, uh, you know, um, Pastor Moses just recently, not too long ago, passed away in India there. And uh, I remember back years ago when he was building the facility, he said, well, I want to name it after you. And I said, no, I don't want you to name it after me. He goes, well, well what should I call it? And I said, well, how about we call it the Father's House? <laughs> and he said, that sounds good. And so that's what it's called today. And I'm so grateful. But that's what this song is about. It's about the Father. When you come into the Father's House, you're okay. You don't have to worry about a thing. You're in the Father's house. Amen. We pray for Caleb as he sings it already. Amen. Sometimes on this journey, get lost in my mistakes. It looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. You won't define me, that's what my father does. Well, you won't define me, that's what my
You know what? I I know I'm the house of God. You know, I, I've been telling our church for years and years and years, this is not the church. You're the church. The, the Lord Jesus Christ does not live in the building. He lives in us. And I'm so grateful for that today that no matter when I call on his name, you know, I, I've been struggling a little bit this week, trying to think in my mind, what in the world am I supposed to share on this Sunday? Because I'm, I'm not one of those guys who can just pick a sermon out or pick one out of there. I just, I'm listening, trying to hear God. And, uh, it's been kind of, you know, silent this week for me. And, uh, it just gave me something a little bit this morning to share, and I'm just going to try and share from that. But I, I realized that... Uh, I need him. I can't do this. Right. Uh, I don't care who you are. You might have the greatest talent and ability in the world, but without his touch on it, it's just like Paul said, it's a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Yeah. You might have a, well, my ministry father says, you might have a voice like a 500 pound canary, but if God don't anoint it, it doesn't touch anybody. Right. Oh, it may thrill a few folks, and folks might say, well, it was really nice. But I want him to say, I felt God. Amen. Yes. I heard God when you sang. I heard God when you talked. I heard God when you did something. You know what? That should be our heart's desire. Don't ever try to take the credit. Don't ever think that the talents and the abilities and stuff that you have, you got them all by yourself. God gave them to you. Miss Shannon said it right here. She's been writing some songs. And I have to believe in my heart, God's given her a song. It's not one of those things Amen. that she's all of a sudden just become a songwriter. And yet, God does breathe on people to write yes. songs. Yes. God does breathe on people to preach messages. God does breathe on people to fight against some of the battles that are out there that we go through every day. And so we need to understand something. God breathes on us. That's why he calls us a body. He doesn't call us just a head. He calls us a body. He's the head. We're the body. We make up the body parts. I'm an arm, a leg, a toe, a nose, a finger. I don't know. I'm something in the, in the body of Christ, and so are you. You need to understand that. You're something in the body of Christ. You might think, I don't do nothing. I can't do nothing. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. yes, you, can. you just lean on the everlasting arm of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I promise you, you can accomplish things that you never thought you could accomplish. Hallelujah. 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 We need to praise God for every good and perfect gift because they do come down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variable to this nor shadow of turning. He doesn't change his mind about us. He hasn't quit on us. So let right. us not quit on Amen. him. Let us keep following him all the way to the end. The journey, I promise you, will be worth it when we get to the other side. You just got to hang in there. Sometimes you get weary. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you go, I'm quitting. You know what? God will do something powerful and majestic in your life. Sometimes you'll just send a butterfly. Praise God. All you need sometimes, just a little thing. It's those little things sometimes that we need to praise God for and thank Him for when He does those things in our life. Amen. And, uh, Amen. I've been made free Hallelujah. by the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so have you that have met Him and let Him be Lord and Master of your life. He's freed you from the bodies and the shackle of sin. And you need to walk in that freedom. Don't let the devil get you down. Don't let the devil depress you. Don't let the devil tell you that you can't make it. You can make it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can make it. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So long I have searched for.
service even if I wasn't here I got to be a part of the service so I said I praise God for that and you know I felt this morning kind of strange because I've been in the house so long <laughs> that it felt strange to be out it honestly did and I had this little bit of uh, anxiety within me and I said Lord I, do you want me not to go for some reason is there some reason you do not want me to go today I won't go and I thought, you know what, Lord? No, this isn't, I don't believe this is you. I believe this is the enemy trying to get me not to go. And so I thought, I'm just packing up my stuff and I'm coming. <laughs> and, I, and I said, and I praise God for it because I have been so blessed. I've been so blessed with every song that we have, have practiced. I, I've been just so blessed already Amen. today. Amen. And Sister Lois, I hope you're watching. She told me to make sure that she gets her kiss. <laughs> There's your big kiss. <laughs> and I'll talk to her this afternoon. And I want to do this song. And I want to do it for her. Because, you know, a lot of us, you know, we've been stuck in. Uh, a lot of us, a lot more than we'd like to be. But I says, you know what? I said, God is so good. And I says, and she's, she's alone. She's got her, her son and her daughter, you know, that lives down in Florida with her. But in the house herself, she's alone. She's an older lady. And... Uh, 
she's in her 90s, but she's very young-minded, and she's, Lord, let me be that, that quick, you know, if I ever get that age. <laughs> but I says, uh, she's a beautiful lady. And you know, Sister Lois, or anyone out there that has been in the house for a long time, you know the Lord. He's with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you. I felt, honest to goodness, in the last week or two, I have felt that that heaviness come on me like a, a depression type thing. I'm not like that. That's not my personality. That's not me because I have the joy of the Lord. And I said, you know, I, said, I couldn't wait to come back. But I knew I had to have wisdom about it. And I said, so, you know, I said, I just, um, when it, it would it would come upon me, and I was busy with my grandson, but I said, we'd go outside, and we'd look at a seven-year-old, seven-year-old. We'd be swinging on the swing in the backyard. And he'd look at me, and he'd say, Mimi, he said, look how, how beautiful the sky is. Look how blue it is. Look at the, the clouds, how white and fluffy. Look at the birds. And I said, you know, baby, I says, this is God's creation. And I said, and everything that your little eyes see is a blessing from him that we can enjoy. And I said, what other seven-year-old sits and just ponders on that? One that's been in for a long time. <laughs> but I praise God that he knows God created all this. So I'm going to sing this song not only for Sister Lois, but for you. And when you get in those spots, in those moments in your life, which I have, praise his name. Just praise his name because he's right there beside you. And he's going to bring us through this. I know he is. So I said, he's going to bring us through this. So just, if you know it, sing it with me and just sing praises to him.
to say this to a lot of people. I said it to a few people, but I've been I've been wanting to say this because um, I truly believe the Lord gave it to me. I believe with all my heart uh, because just before all of this started and just before we had to be quarantined, <laughs> quarantined. I, can't, I, I keep saying locked in <laughs> but quarantine, same thing and I says, I was praying one morning and I was sitting on my desk and I was praying and as I was praying it was like uh, I know it was God speaking to me and it was I, I don't know if it was a vision within me or exactly what it was but I said, all of a sudden, this was before, before we got quarantined. Uh, but they were, we, we were hearing about this virus, but it was before that we, we got quarantined. And I said, and I heard the Lord telling me uh, the story about the Israelites and the Egyptians. And that in the land of Egypt, when they went through all the ten plagues, because they would not worship God. They would not, pay, they didn't even acknowledge Him. They had all kinds of gods. And God came against every one of their gods with the place, with the place that they did. And I says, but over in the land of Goshen, where God's people were, not one plague. Not one plague. None. And then He showed me. He showed me, I, I saw this door frame, wooden door frame, and I saw the blood being painted over the door, up each side, just like they did back then. And when the death angel passed through, not one, if the blood was on the door, not one of God's children died, not one. And yet, in the land of Egypt, all the firstborn perished. And I believe from that moment on, I've kept that in my head the whole time that we've been going through all of this. And I said, I believe for some reason, and when God's children came out, if you remember, the very next day, they came out healthier and wealthier than they had ever been in their lives. And I took that as God telling me, you know, that everything's going to be all right. And, you know, this is going to be okay for my children because I'm going to show them. And they're going to come out healthier and wealthier than they've ever been. And hopefully, hopefully, I pray that during this time, I know within myself, I've, I feel like I've changed a lot. I've gotten closer. And I thank God for that. And I said, but, you know, during this time, you know, I said, I hope when we do come out of this, that we come out wiser. Yes. Wiser and closer to God than we have ever been. Yes. And we will not turn from Him. Yes. We will not turn from Him. Yes. He is our only hope, strength, life, everything. During this time is when we need to get closer to Him than we have ever been in our lives. Amen. And then when it gets better, don't turn around and go the other way. Go deeper and deeper into Him. Yes. We're going home soon. Yes. We need to be ready. Yes. Amen. Amen. Good word. Good Thank you, Sandy. Hallelujah. Scripture didn't say they just came out. That they came out with a mighty hand. Amen. Yes. <laughs> and we have a mighty God, so how how other women could they have come out? A mighty God does powerful and marvelous things. It was got this stuff set up and I gotta get it. Let's hold on with the cord. So, trip over it. I'll be falling down here in the pulpit. And people will be saying, Where are you going? Praise the Lord. I did take a fall last week. <clears throat> but uh, here at the church, it was one of those come to Jesus moments, I guess. My boys kind of, 
I think they panicked a little bit, wondering if I got hurt. But I didn't. Well, I got a scratch on my leg. I think I'll live. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you hear me already? Right? Yeah, fine. You just sound rough. I just sound rough? Yeah, well, that's good because I've been singing for three hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, you know, I, uh, I shared with you last week about ch cherishing uh, what we have. And uh, I'd like to just kind of go back there this morning. Uh, the Lord really didn't give me anything else other than this. And uh, so I thought, well, maybe I need to finish this up. I need to dig a little deeper. You know, sometimes we, uh, if you mine in a, in a mine long enough, you'll discover things that, uh, that are there that you didn't know were there. And sometimes that's the way the Scripture is. You discover things in the Scriptures that... Even though you had read it time and time again, uh, you didn't see it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, all of a sudden, something becomes clearer. Something becomes a word in due season for you. It kind of challenges and changes something in your heart. And I'm like Sandy. I, you know, during all this time, it's given me an opportunity to draw closer. And I pray that's what it's done for you because... Uh, too many people, you know, if, if people would have been drawn closer to the Lord, we wouldn't have all this stuff going on right now. There wouldn't be all the people protesting and all this stuff. If people just been drawing to the Lord. And, uh, but our world is kind of in an uproar right now. And, uh, we need to be the best light we can be right now. You know, I heard a quote this week, or I read a quote this week, uh, by a, a gentleman I've been reading after C.H. McIntosh. And, uh, he said, we need to learn to love people where they are and not where we think they should be. Right. Because I think sometimes we're trying to make them into something that God hasn't made them into yet. And we think we can do it. I can't do that with my children. I can't do that with my grandchildren. I cannot do that with church folk. I just have to pray that God will make them into what he wants them to be in his timing. Amen. Not in mine. Because... If I had my way, I'd fix everything right now. Wouldn't you? I mean, wouldn't you like to say, bye-bye virus, <laughs> out of here. No more protest, everybody's gonna get along. You know, it's like old John Lennon saying years ago, all you need is love. And you know, sometimes I think people fail to realize that really that is what would bring everything back together if people would just love each other like they're supposed to. But, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read the, some of the things that I, I read last week just to kind of place to have a place to jump off from. Uh, it says here, what we have received in Christianity is far more than what we have given. God usually receives our leftovers rather than our best. Many are no different than the religious people of Jesus' day who brought the halt and the lame animals for sacrifice. Uh, if we would examine our motives, and I think we need to do that from time to time, behind our relationship, we would discover how self-serving they really are. For some, God is nothing more than a go-to guy when trouble comes. He's a rabbit's foot we carry in our pocket and pull out at our convenience. The people in the town of Colossae were faith-filled people who loved all of God's people. They were confident in their hope of what God had reserved for them in heaven. See, I think that's where we miss it. We keep forgetting that there's something for us when this is all done. We, we, we think this is all there is. And sometimes we live that way. We live as though, well, this must be it. You know, eat, drink, be merry, for tomorrow we die. But I need to, uh, you to understand something. The, the people in Colossae had this, this desire, this passion that kept them following Jesus because they realized what was ahead. They realized what was beyond all of the trial and the struggle and the battle that they were going through at this particular time. They, they seen heaven. Their, their, their vision was on heavenly things and heavenly places. And so we need to keep our mind also in the same direction because if we don't, we'll, all we'll see is the world. We'll see the world around us. We'll see all the struggle, all the battle. And the next thing you know, we're going to walk around depressed, feeling bad, thinking that nothing's ever going to change, nothing's ever going to get better. One of these days, Cindy said it earlier, one of these days we're going home. 
Amen. I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know how much longer I have on this earth. You know, I, I've got people that I was thinking about this week. People that I grew up with, people that I went to school with, people that lived next door to me, people that, you know, I've known for years and years and years, and a lot of them are gone. They left. I know I'm going to, someday. I thought I was leaving last year. I didn't know that, but everybody else I think thought I was, and they were praying that I wouldn't, I guess. <laughs> were you? You was praying that I wouldn't, right? Yeah. Okay, I needed to get an amen from somebody. I support. <laughs> Hallelujah. Their expectation did not waver even in the midst.